Have you figured out your bubble? Are you ready for the bubble world we're about to live in? Are we really opening up if we have to keep distance, if our kids have to wear masks and gloves? What's happening in the world? And should this still be going on? We're going to talk about popping the bubble theory today and perhaps one of the biggest headlines that has ever struck during COVID-19. I think it's proof that this should all be over. Why are we here? What's going on? Anyone that doesn't agree with living in a bubble, you don't want to be the boy in the bubble, then perhaps you were out on your Memorial Day weekend rallying against this level of insanity. Well, we went to one of those rallies in Austin, Texas. This is what that looked like. It is time to open up Texas 100%. We have lost more liberty in 60 days than we've lost almost in the history of this country. Nobody in this building, no governor, no president, no one has a right to tell you, a sovereign American citizen, a sovereign Texan, that you're not essential. What do you have to say to the people who think people are selfish for protesting for their rights and not protecting the vulnerable? How do you see it? Well, we can protect the vulnerable, but we don't need to have a carpet bombing approach where we don't focus on what the real vulnerable community is. What we're trying to do is subjugate, you know, the healthy people. You know, quarantine is for the people that are sick, the people that are vulnerable. But this is house arrest. This is illegal martial law. This is tyranny. What brings you guys out here today? Defending the Constitution and even above that, the Bill of Rights. Because we are Americans. And I don't want my kids to live in a world where they're afraid of people and interaction. I'm, I'm here today to encourage uh, patriots to, uh, to stand firm on the convictions. You must defend the Constitution. If you don't, all the war dead in Arlington, every cemetery across the country, all of that was for nothing. We're military police, first responders like firefighters, EMTs, search and rescue. All of us who took an oath to support and defend the Constitution. That oath is directly to defend the Constitution. It's not to defend the president or follow uh, unnecessary orders or, or bad orders. We defend the Constitution only. In the beginning of the COVID response, our government scrambled to do the best that they could, but they reacted to bad and incomplete data. And we, the people, were asked to make a huge sacrifice for, for the greater good. And we did that. But now, we have better data. We have reliable treatment. We have testing. I think it's very sad that you have individuals out there acting out of their own fear, which has been stoked by the media, that paranoia and hysteria. Let me just talk about jail for a second. And my dad was a master gunny sergeant in the Marines. And uh, people ask, how do you, why did you have the courage to do that? Honestly, telling that judge where to go was nothing compared to what our veterans have done, honestly. As a former military man, do you think that it's concerning at all when Trump says he's going to use the military to enforce a mandated vaccine? How do you feel about the COVID vaccine? I'm not taking a vaccine. I mean, no government has the right to tell the American people that they have to have a vaccine. And, you know, the president is wrong. I'm, I'm not going to take a chip. I'm not going to do BioTract. I'm not going to be taking compelled vaccines because I don't trust a marriage of big government and big business. So you got the pharmaceutical companies going to make trillions of dollars off of what would be coerced vaccines. I was a test case for all polio when I was an infant. I was a test case for the first time that the measles, mumps, and rubella was a combinant. And I got three or four other vaccines that day. And two months later, I was diagnosed with mononucleosis, which is Epstein-Barr virus which the NIH and the CDC acknowledge that the polio vaccines, Dr. Salk and Dr. Hilleman, they acknowledge that they had contaminated vaccines. The fact that they're fast tracking a vaccine, um, the injuries, I feel like it's really, they would be testing it out on the population versus um, doing actual real safety studies and double blind placebo studies like they talk about that being the gold standard. Government does not exist to protect our health. Government exists to protect our rights. And I think they're a little bit confused about that. And there is nothing selfish about liberty and freedom. 
If there are people that want to stay in their house, stay in your house. But they don't know the heart of this man that stands here and talks to you right now. Because I'm here, you have a right to sit in that easy chair and gripe at me all day long. But the day that I'm gone, that easy chair of yours you're sitting in, it's gone too. Welcome to the biggest hustle in the history of the United States of America. I think we're going to look back on this and we're going to have gotten it all wrong. We did it for the good of everyone. That's what we were, like, that's the bill of goods we bought. Um, but I, I hope that we never uh, buy into that again. When you leave out of here today, you have to go out with that same exact commitment. It is not about Republican, it is not about Democrat, it is all about the fundamental principles and values upon which this great nation and this great state were built upon. Either you believe in it, either you're willing to fight for it, but let me tell you something, stay in your house with the mask and the real Texans will come out and do the fight for you. Well, all across America, there were 18 different states that had rallies over Memorial Day weekend. And really, if you think about it, when, we think, when we're honoring those that fight for this country, one of the biggest things they fight for is our right to assemble, to stand and represent our voices with free speech, freedom uh, to, to come together and ask our government, what are you doing, and ask for changes well, I want to introduce you to one of the newest members of the High Wire team, Aliyah Matheson. You were the one that went and checked out that incredible rally. Um, so overall, you know, a lot of people, the, the mainstream media will try to say that, you know, they're just Trump people or they're stupid people, they're uneducated people that don't know what they're talking about, that are putting everyone at risk. What would, how would you describe that audience? Were they, were they educated? They seemed to know what they were talking about? Yeah, there were a lot of people who were former military people. There was a lot of parents who are just concerned about their rights and, you know, just concerned citizens. It, it seemed very nonpartisan, like there weren't, there were Trump supporters, but there were also people who seemed to vote various different ways, and they're all just concerned about their liberties at this point. So. Now, originally, I've always traveled and been to these rallies that are, you know, anti-vaccine rallies. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'd be curious, in your sense of it, how many people would have been anti-vaccine prior to COVID-19 versus, you know, that audience now? Did, do you feel like there's a crossover happening where liberty, you know, Second Amendment rights people, uh, freedom of speech people, are they starting to move in and, and join this vaccine discussion? Because I, it looked like a few of those people were discussing their rights and not wanting to be injected that may not have been on this uh, on this path before. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I think a lot of people, they aren't really thinking about it until it affects them. Like the kids, it's whatever, you know, the children, if they want to go to school, fine. But then when it comes to the parents or them, then they start thinking like, wait a second, I don't have what exemption? Like what? <laughs> so right. I think that's what's kind of bringing out the people who are like, wait a second. They're thinking about it for the first time where maybe they don't have kids or they've never thought about it to begin with and now... Now it's upon Now them. they're kind of crossing over into the medical freedom movement where initially they might have just been for gun rights, like you said, or, you know, First Amendment or other areas of freedom. Um, it seemed like there was a lot of sort of military there, police officers and people that were in plain clothes supporting mm -hmm. this. What, what, what did you feel was the vibe from the police that were there to sort of guard the Capitol and make sure it was okay? Would it, was there any tension at all? Not at all. So I've actually talked to a lot of the police. When setting up the rallies, we do like a courtesy call. We let them know we're coming, and they were, are super cool with it. From what I know, they just said, I want things to go back to normal. That was kind of the vibe that I got from them. When you think, when they say the word normal, do you think they're picturing in their minds the normal we had before this or this new normal of constant masks and social distancing? Definitely the old normal. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how old are you? I'm 23. Okay, you're 23 years old. You're a new mom, correct? Uh-huh. Four months in. So, a lot of people, you know, are asking, where are the young people? Where are the new moms? Where are those that are, you know, 20, either in college, right out of college, uh, did you see any of those people there? Do they care about this issue? Obviously, you do. What are your thoughts on sort of the, the youth or, or the, the young adults of, of this right. nation right now? What do they think of COVID-19 pandemics and lockdowns? So it would seem that they're kind of going with a lot of the mainstream narratives, and I think that's for two reasons. I think, for one, I think that um, they're basically educated in a certain way that's kind of 
leaning towards one side of things and they don't have a lot of opportunity for nuance because they're not exposed to diff lots of different ideas in colleges and schools. It's kind of one agenda that's pushed onto them. And then two, I feel like they don't really value elderly wisdom when it comes to just life experience. They kind of think, well, we're going to bring in this new way of doing things and tradition is like ridiculous. And, you know, so I think it's kind of both those attitudes that are why people are just not really rising to the top and, you know, trying to prevent certain things from happening. Do you think in some ways that, you know, your generation obviously that went through school had a lot more already doing a lot more of their education on computers, are using iPhones all the time. So when we start thinking about social distance, we're talking about changing the schools and doing more work from home and on computers. Is this a generation that's almost been designed to move in that direction anyway? I think in some ways, but I think any human being is created to be around other people. And I think it's going to get old really quickly. And I'm hoping that's kind of when people will start fighting for their rights because right now it's kind of just like oh this is cool I'm an introvert like it's not a big deal like you know you'll see the memes about like I could quarantine forever but I think when they're actually gonna get to that point I think that's when it'll settle in like I don't know if I actually want this. <laughs> well I think about that and we started seeing also over the weekend beaches starting to fill up mm -hmm. you know giant parties and swimming pools and inside of mansions and these photos were coming out all over and I just thought you know at 20 something I certainly wanted to get out and party and have fun. And I think about all of the bars and all of the dance clubs. I mean, are, are we going, are we really going, do, is it possible we're going to see those things close down? And I think to myself, what size is that population that are at a place in their lives where why are you locking me down? I agree. I feel like we're going to get sick of this pretty quick. And the honeymoon seems to be waning. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more people like I was, you know, at the domain, there's people in bars, there's people everywhere, there's people all over beaches. I, I think it's just going to be one of those things where they either realize that there's so many people out and nobody's getting infected or they're just going to be like, I'm tired of being in my house because it's not healthy. And it, we're created again for communication. We're created to be interacting with each other. We're not supposed to just be at home in our little bedrooms, you know, on our computers all day long. <laughs> Um, my uh, wife's cousin is in. She's younger than we are. She's, she's about in your age group. And the discussion came up at home, you know, where at once at that age you really wanted to be a mom. You're a new mom. I hear a lot of people saying, I don't even want to have kids. I don't want to bring kids into a world that's going to be like this. Obviously, you've decided to have children. Mm -hmm. what, are, what do you feel about those statements being made by people yeah. in your generation? I mean, I understand it. I don't think it's anything new, though. I think we've always had corruption. I think we've always had, you know, governments that are trying to infringe on our liberties. And you see that during the Holocaust. I mean, slavery. I mean, people were having children in so many different eras where there were things happening that were way worse than now or on the same level. So I think, I don't know, it's like I get the sentiment behind it, but I also don't think you can stop, you know, just people from creating families because that's something that we like are inherently supposed to be doing and it's built into us in a lot of ways. Are you worried about the future for your baby right now thinking growing up what, what are your thoughts of that future? So it's pretty scary I think before anything too crazy would happen I feel like there's enough people against it that there would be some sort of pushback and um, I don't know what that's going to look like exactly, but I know, you know, God wins in the end. So I know that God loves my baby more than I even love my own baby. So I'm putting my baby in his hands and, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'm going to do everything I can to protect my baby and fight because I don't think that's a call for complacency. I think I should be out there doing everything I can, but anything outside of that, that's just up to God. Which is something you've been doing, right? You are part of actually sort of organizing these rallies yeah. and getting in there and making that happen. Uh, why? I mean, honestly, why you? Why, what is it about, if someone was to ask you, is it, did you have a teacher? Is it your parents? Why are you different than a lot of your generation? Why are you this active and, and wanting to get involved? Yeah, so, I mean, I was homeschooled. Okay. <laughs> so I, you know, my mom, she was anti-vax before it was popular, okay. <laughs> I guess you could say. And um, I just feel like... I was looking out and no one was really doing anything. I wasn't seeing people pushing back. And immediately when they said there was this whole pandemic, I was skeptical and I was like, okay, it's 
something's up, they're going to try and pull something. I, I had heard about, you know, Agenda 2020 in the CDC and talking about how they want to kind of encourage adults into vaccine ma vaccines and I'm like how would they use this to encourage adults like I was just kind of thinking like what would be the purpose of this right. so that kind of made me worried <laughs> and I was like well nobody else seems to be thinking about it so I was like okay I'll just organize my own thing and that kind of started off the rallies so but it's been cool just you know getting together with different organizers and having people come together and i think it's going to get bigger and bigger the longer this goes that's my hope anyway well good for you yeah. welcome to the team alia we're going to be sending you out to get more reports from people out on the streets and things like that and especially people younger people because i think we've got to start on trying to figure out how we're going to affect a new generation mm -hmm. of people especially those that are going to be having you know, giving birth to our future generations. We've got to get to them before that happens and make sure that, you know, we create that new world, right, that we're all yep. dreaming of. <laughs> yep, I agree. All right, Aaliyah, keep up the good work. If you like that clip, then be sure to check out our live broadcast of The High Wire every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time. You can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, and Twitter. We'll see you there.